Hey guys, welcome to another episode on the show. Thank you for coming on. Real quick, I really want to thank Venture Munitions. They help us a lot with keeping these channels going. They really help us a lot with getting ammunition for the live fire segments of these channels. Thank you very much, Venture Munitions, and go check them out. They're based in Vegas if you do. So if you remember, earlier we went to Two Rivers Arms in uh, Two River Arms in Oklahoma City in Oklahoma, and we covered their Tabooks, right? They make a Tabook Sniper. I think they earlier had a Tabook RPK we weren't able to get. Um, they make a folding stock variant and a standard stock variant. You know, If you remember when I was talking in the Tabook Sniper, I mentioned something called the El Caracia. Today, not only do I have one El Caracia, but I have two El Caracias. This is very, very, very unique. And this is fascinating because there aren't that many of these. Even in Iraq, there aren't that many of these rifles. Um, you can look at you know news reports about Iraq. You can look at stuff coming out of Iraq, photos, that kind of thing. There just aren't that many of them left around. You don't see them with the insurgency. You don't see them with um, the current guys who are fighting in the Iraqi army today. You don't see them in the PMU units. You don't see them in use by Daesh or Al-Qaeda. Um, you just don't see them in use anymore. There are some photos out there where you see them. You see, you know, the gold-plated ones with Saddam. You see some other stuff as well. But you really don't see them very much, right? If you're familiar, the Tabuk series is all based on Yugos. Yugo, um, M70s, M76s, not the M76s as I was, but all about Yugos, okay? Now, as you know, that is a stamp platform. Um, but Yugoslavia at the time, currently Serbia, Zastav Arms, uh, Yugoslavia never had an SVD platform, right? But Iraq wanted an SVD platform. Yugoslavia did have the M76, but that's not an SVD. It's very similar to an SVD in sort of the form and uh, function, very similar in the concept of it, but it's not an SVD. Um, the receiver and the style of operations just isn't. If you're familiar with your SVDs, then you know this is not a Kalashnikov platform, which, by the way, for reference, we have an actual... Um, Soviet SVD. It's from the 1970s or 1960s. This is an actual Soviet SVD, okay? Real quick, what are the, some of the things that are different from an SVD and a Kalashnikov? The biggest thing is the operating system, all right? Kalashnikov uses, you know, a long stroke uh, gas rod where the gas, entire gas rod is, the gas is bled into it and the entire gas rod goes back with the, op, uh, it's actually an op rod with the bolt and goes back to the rear and cycles the action, right? An SVD is more like an SKS and that you have a short stroke piston that's inside here and that's simply that impulse when it goes back and you'll see it in a second that impulse is enough um, for that to drive the bolt rearward and then cycle the weapon. But Iraq wanted one of those, right? But Yugoslavia didn't make them. So what did Iraq do? Iraq copied them, okay? And the result is this. And we've got two El Cadesias right here, uh, 762 by 54 This one is an earlier model, um, has 1991 on it. While this one over here is a later model, this one actually has a stamp of 2003 on it. Very, very late, probably you know, in the, for one of the last production runs of it because Saddam was invaded in 2003, right? So this is a very, very late model. It's a very, very early model. Um, they copied it, and from afar, it looks very similar to an SVD. But there's a lot of changes to it. There's a lot of differences between the two. The biggest thing, and the biggest thing to look out for, and please, I, I, I dare you, next time you're on the internet or you see a bunch of you know, insurgents or you see a bunch of footage coming out of Iraq, look at this very carefully. Look at the magazines. The magazines are the biggest giveaway here because the al Qadisiya has a palm tree on it, right? Palm tree on both sides. Whereas a Dragunov, which this has a Dragunov magazine in here, just to show you the difference. Um, but this is not what the al was issued with. This is a Dragunov magazine. The Dragunov magazine actually has ribs um, inside it, and you can see the difference right here, right? Uh, there's a bunch of other differences as well in the internals. There's a whole lot of like weld or rivet points, not rivet points, but uh, spot welds that are all along the al magazine that are not present in the Dragunovs. But that's the biggest difference from afar. You can tell between, oh, is that an SVD or is that Chinese or is that Norinco or whatever? It's an al Qadisiyah if you see these palm trees on it right there. there Iraq, Iraq was the only um, country to produce these with these sort of weird palm trees on there, right? The second biggest difference is in the receivers, okay? The weird thing about the al Qadisiyah and what the, what the Iraqis really screwed up on was that the receiver is actually two pieces, okay? A Dragunov receiver 
first of all, is milled. Okay, this is a milled receiver. You can tell by the cuts in this, this sort of uh, mag well, it's a magazine relief cut, um, but that's not present in the Iraqi one, right? There's nothing there. There's also Arabic markings in the El Qadassia. It's got Mim for semi-automatic, and it looks like Ein or Alif for uh, safe. In addition, there is something else that I want to point out in Arabic on here. Well, first of all, the markings on the Al Qadassiyah, they say on the front, Al Qadassiyah 7.62 by 5.4, made in Iraq, right? And some people can speculate that this is probably, uh, you know, made in English. Maybe they were made for export because it's in English. Me, personally, uh, after having been in, uh, in Kabul for the past couple of months, I personally think this is a status thing uh, in that if you mark stuff in English, in the Arab world, in a lot of other countries, English is sort of used as a status symbol. To, um, to show that, okay, you know, you're more educated or that you have, your, you have a better background overseas or something. And I think that's what that's about, to show people visiting or show dignitaries that uh, it's in English, right, and to, sh to give that a little bit off. Um, but we also have another Arabic marking here on the late production El Qadassiyah that we have. And this one has a medallion that's in the stock, and it's also on the receiver, but the medallion says in Arabic, I can't really make it out there, but it says Latib. When it comes to the Al Qadassiyah and the SVD, the Al Qadassiyah receiver is actually split towards the back. It's actually two, there's actually two sections back here, whereas the Dragonov receiver, you don't see that. And this is the takedown for the Dragonov. It's a takedown for the Al Qadassiyah, and you can get a good view here. There's this bit of metal here where the Iraqis has this sort of stamped piece that went up to the, where the trigger guard is and then where the stock attached to it. The stock is actually attached to a uh, sort of uh, U-shaped piece of sheet metal that is then riveted to the stamp steel, uh, to the stamp receiver, which that doesn't exist here with the Soviets. They simply had a receiver that went the entire length that was milled out, right? It doesn't exist there. Um, the Iraqis don't have that. But another big difference between the al Qadassi and the Dragunov is the front sight. The front sight post of the Dragunov is different than the front sight post of the Al Qadassiyah. The difference is that the Al Qadassiyah is actually a AK or Kalashnikov style front sight post, whereas the Dragunov is actually a proprietary one and is not used there. So another thing I want to point out here is that sometimes some people confuse the Romanian PSL to be interchangeable with Al Qadassiyah and have parts interchangeable between the two. In addition, People confuse the Iraqi Al Qadassiyah to be interchangeable with the SVD. That's not true at all. There is very little, if any at all, part on these, on both of, on all these rifles that can be interchangeable. Um, from the receiver top cover, it may look deceiving, but it's not. It does not happen. Okay, it's different in the safeties, different buttstocks. They're very different. All right. One more thing I want to point out here is that the Al Qadassiyahs have this rubber uh, attachment that's on the bottom of the grip that's screwed in there. Both the late and the earlier versions have this. This is something that the Dragunov does not have. Why they went with this, I'm not sure. Maybe it was designed to protect the bottom of the wood uh, from scratching or you could rest it down or something like that. Not entirely sure, but that is there and that is another distinguishing characteristic of the Al Qadassiyah. All right, so what's the conclusion to this story? You know, were these, were these useful? Were these accurate? Were these effective? Well, these probably would have been used in three different wars, right? Um, the most likely would have been used in the Iran-Iraq War. Definitely would have been used in Gulf War 1991. This even has a 1991 year stamp against the United States. Um, and probably definitely in the 2003 war. I know there is a lot of long-range shooting that the insurgency in Iraq did after 2003 um, when the United States was there. However, whether or not much of that was done with, an, with al Qadassiyahs, I don't know. Uh, in addition, there are all sorts of arms that just flooded into Iraq after that, right? You know, you had the PSLs, you had the Tabuk snipers that were there, you had Western designs and G3s from Iran that p Iran was pumping uh, small arms into Iraq. Um, you had all sorts of stuff going into Iraq, right? So whether or not this was actually used very much by insurgents afterwards, it's probably debatable. I haven't heard much that they did use it. Whether it was used in conventional combat, possibly. 
Um, I don't know many reports. If there are any, if there are any Marines or soldiers out there who want to contribute, or Iranian veterans from the Iran Iraq War who want to contribute to this discussion on whether or not it was used, please chime in. Send me an email. I'd love to hear back from you and see, you know, did you ever face this in combat and was it actually effective? I am guessing probably not. Um, the Iraqi army was ex was very poorly trained and was a very poor morale when facing the United States, especially in the Gulf War and in, and in 2003. Um, doing the Iran-Iraq War, I don't know, they were a little bit, the case was a little bit different. But anyways, thanks a lot for coming on the show, guys. Really appreciate the viewership. If you could like and subscribe, uh, that'd be great. In addition, if you like our Patreon and if you want to consider donating to help us get things like camera equipment and that sort of deal, absolutely thank you very much for that as well. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. This was a very, very cool gun to make a video about. I am very happy that we were able to get our hands on this at TFB, and not only one, but actually two of these rifles. Mm -hmm.